I man. <clears throat> Food theory is Logan Paul lying about Prime Energy 2. And uh, saying we did react to his video on Prime Hydration, Prime Energy. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. What is that aftertaste? Right? What is, what is this flavor? It is a wild journey, my friends. <laughs> Let's go. Hello, Internet. Well, hey, I did food taste test on my uh, King Nu Extra channel. You're not saying I did uh, the taste test for all of it. Welcome to Food Theory, where today we follow up on our Prime video with even more Prime. <laughs> Double Prime. Prime squared. So I'm gonna go the Liver King because we're getting primal up in here. Anyway, you get the idea. This time around, we're gonna be taking a closer look at Prime Energy, the yeah. energy drink variation of the Logan Paul backed beverage company. As a refresher, last time we covered Logan's take over the drink aisle, we were specifically talking about his hydration drinks. Basically, your Gatorade equivalents. Or, as we found out, you are definitely not Gatorade and pretty <laughs> misleading equivalents. If you missed that one, you can Damn. stop over there first, or you just carry on with this episode and then check that one out at the end. But the upshot was, in true Logan Paul form, everything was not quite what it appeared to be when it came to his prized sports Line beverage. TLDR, not all electrolytes are created equally. Anyway, fast yep. forwarding to today, the reason we're back here talking about Prime again is that I didn't realize when I started that last episode that Prime actually has itself two separate lines of drinks. One is the hydration drink line that we just covered, and the other is an energy drink line. What's the difference? Primarily, anything that's classified as a sports drink is likely to have some kind of electrolyte to help you replenish what you lose when you sweat, but there's zero caffeine there. Think classic Gatorade or Powerade drinks. An energy yep. drink, on the other hand, is gonna have itself some caffeine or other stimulant in there as the primary selling point. Think Red Bull, Monster, and Rockstar as most famous in this category. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. honestly, when I started research on that <clears> last <throat> episode, I had no idea that Prime offered both, even while I was standing there in the aisle at the store. They're setting it? relative to everything else is confusing because on one hand it's like oh it's nestled between sports drinks and energy drinks but the consistency and organization is just off right prime is yes caffeine then no caffeine then no caffeine it's really inconsistent there's <laughs> nothing that would tell you right away they said put all that shit together you know what i'm saying because their bottles they pop bro literally you walk down the aisle you turn your head you're quick to see prime bro because of the the big black letters you know what i'm saying that you know you're in a caffeine <clears throat> section or a non-caffeine section you just really have to look at the bottle i mean look yeah. it's the same brand it's the same logo it has a lot yeah, black, white text. All of the same flavors, just the energy ones are in cans. Okay, be honest with me. I was like the last to find this one out, right? Fine. I'll be honest. I'll mm -hmm. take the L. But as soon as I made that revelation, I figured out that we had ourselves a two-parter on our hands. So yeah. here I am back for more delicious Prime. Okay. <laughs> Or not, we'll just have to find out. Now, it's no surprise that Logan Paul and his Prime brand are also hit. dabbling in energy drinks. The energy drink industry is just massive, and it's continuing to grow as we all try to do more at home and at work, all trying to keep pace with the impossible standards of the internet. In 2020 alone, the global market was valued at $45.8 billion, and it's expected to grow to Damn. $108 billion by 2031. Every celebrity Crazy. seems to want to get a piece of that, from Josh Richards to Joe Rogan to The Rock. Now, Logan Paul and KSI have thrown their hats into yet another ring to go toe to toe with the goliaths that are red bull and monster the number one selling energy brand in the world versus prime energy they're both the u.s version and they're both 12 ounce cans 160 calories versus 10 calories Ooh. 38 grams of sugar versus zero grams of sugar what 114 milligrams of caffeine we got 200 milligrams ain't no way and when it comes to electrolytes 150 milligrams of electrolytes we double it 300 oh just like when we analyzed Prime <laughs> against Gatorade for hydration, I'm here to answer Bruh. a few questions about whether Prime measures up to the big names in the space, all to find out what goes on behind these buzzy beverages, and whether all the marketing here is above board. So how does one scientifically determine- Jeez. I've yet to try these, bro. Their cans are fire, bruh. Ghost cans are so fire. They have, like, this, like, grip to them. It's so dope, bro. They probably- Yo. I ain't gonna lie, it probably costs more money to make their cans than anything else, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Red Bull, still top tier, you know what I'm saying? The <clears> best <throat> energy drink. Well, there are three criteria as I see it. First off is just 
overall energy levels. Does this make you feel more energetic? Secondly, what does the crash look like at the end of that energy period? Are you coming down smooth for an easy landing or are you like, oh my gosh, please kill me now? But criteria number three is why I'm sitting in front of this giant thing of cans here. I want to test out the flavor. Obviously, since all of these things have basically the same types of ingredients, how yeah. do they taste? That's going to be a huge variable here. So yeah. outside of this room, as we speak, we have members of Team Theorist who are ingesting a variety of these different things. This has been happening over the last week. They're taking surveys, analyzing their energy levels, their crash levels. So across the board, we're going to have a decent data set here to tell us what's giving them energy and what's giving them good crashes at the end of this. And as far as taste, we're going to be bringing on five different guests to join me on the couch way across these different beverages and uh, see which one actually doesn't make us want to die when we ingest it. Now, obviously, we can't test every single energy drink that's on the market today. This is like the biggest trend in beverages right now. There are more of these things coming out by the week. Bro, facts, bro. Hold on. Bang. I don't lie. I never tried none of these. I've only tried Monster, Red Bull, and uh, Prime, bro. And so we decided to pick five of the top selling brands across the board, representing a good variety of different flavors and options and, and sizes. Also, you know, as I think about it, we picked five because five is a prime number. And this episode is all about primes. So in the end, can prime stand up to the test? Or should I say three tests that we've designed for it today? We're about to find out. Now, before I start caffeinating myself until my atoms start to vibrate, we have to understand what exactly we're tasting here. Most people choose their energy drink primarily based on flavor, including our team yeah. when we asked them in a survey this week as part of this episode. They basically assume that as long as they've got plenty of caffeine and a decent flavor, they're getting the job done when it comes to energy drinks. What most people don't realize, though, is that under the hood of these things are a whole bunch of variables when it comes to ingredients, sweeteners, even the type of caffeine you're drinking. And yes, yeah. there is, in fact, more than one type. On top of just the energy Guys. though there's also vitamins sometimes juice or in the case of something like prime extra ingredients like coconut water that are supposed to make them healthier is that true is it not we're going to talk <laughs> about that after the taste test portion make them healthier bro <laughs> that's like slapping freaking it's like slapping a carrot on a steak bro just because you're eating the carrot don't make it any healthier type shit you know what i'm saying and all the energy oh, drinks no. that we're consuming today will have basically <laughs> four things in common they're all going to start with water they're going to contain some type of sweetener some fuck oh my god bro I like these colors. We will have basically four things. Damn, yo, them bitches pop at you. In common. They're all going to start with water. They're going to contain some type of sweetener, some Jeez. type of vitamin blend, and of course, crushing amounts of caffeine. First, we're going to find out which one That's tastes fire. the best, and then we're going to size them up and see how they compare based on the chemistry of their stimulant formulas. So round number one, we've got ourselves what yeah. we're dubbing the original flavors of each of these energy drinks. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> ah, yes. The flavor of synthetic berry. Bing. Smoother. Much nice. smoother. Round number three. Here we go. Let's see. Ew. Bing. <laughs> this reads more like Hawaiian punch to me. All right. Okay. Five. Oh, we're back to carbonation. Do you have a winner? <laughs> Is that the goal here? Yeah. The winner? Yeah, the, okay. the winner. The losers are us, I feel like. Next up, the blue <laughs> round. Joining me on the couch is actually new theorist <clears throat> face, Rachel. Hello. Happy to be here. Well, Let's try some it. blue flavor, shall we? Oh, I really I'm don't like this. I don't like this first one at all. This one sure. is the most synthetic of yeah. all of them. Definitely the least blue. All right. Next up is the orange round. And we've got ourselves Josiah on the couch. I'm excited to be back for some prime. That's so good. Oh, that's really good. Oh, man. That is monster <laughs> results from Monster. This is, hey, we took the orange flavor, filtered it through like a coffee strainer, and then we Yo. mixed it with like water. Own, that like Orange Prime is good. Street. That was an odd journey. <laughs> this round is citrus flavor. Joined on the couch by Jason. Bing, bing. Here we go. You're just drinking? As opposed to what? You gotta wash it. <laughs> well, it's got a little sippy hole. You can smell. Put your nose up to that and suck. Yeah, spoiler alert, slightly fizzier lemonade. Next up, round red with my <clears> special <throat> guest, Santi. Hello. Hey, so this is another new face on the theorist couch. You are also the food theory creative director. I am indeed. Mm. What's your experience with energy drinks? You know, not much. My body is my temple, so I try not to ransack it with chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, wow, that is that, a punch in the face. If this one was a gentle, like, caress, <laughs> if that, and here just comes up. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I am seeing well, all tweaking, these boy, like, this shirt's fucked. Oh, the caffeine is surging through my veins. 
Oh boy, off one boy. My head is like a rave party, and I'm the only guest. I just want to take a nap. That is the antithesis of what this episode was supposed to do. I just want to sleep now. Ah! So what have we learned here today? Well, one thing is immediate. Oh, bitch ass! I thought his shirt was wet. Completely clear. Monster crushed the competition. It won three out of our five flavor categories and was a top contender in pretty much the other two. Meanwhile, on the other end of the spectrum, oh boy, Red Bull. It might give you wings, but it's not giving you a whole lot of flavor. This thing sucked. It was dead last in pretty much every category. Damn. It might have been the first, but you also happen to be the worst. Now, as far as Prime goes, our topic of the day, across the board, pretty solid. Not necessarily topping out every <clears> single <throat> category, but very consistently in the top two. So really good, but uh, that's only part of our equation here. We still have to look at the amount of energy being delivered, as well as the crash. And for that, we have to go to our other set of data. Thanks for the handoff there, live action me. Let's analyze the results, shall we? To begin, the one thing that everyone agreed to was that Red Bull was universally the absolute worst. Oh, oh god. Damn. Oh, that's weird. I don't like that. Oh, weird. I don't like that. What is this? I don't know, gang. Original Red Bull is fine. The flavor on the back of this is not nice. I swear, it's like a chalky aftertaste of like a Pepto or a <laughs> Necco wafer. Across every flavor category, it was always in the bottom. So if you're looking for flavor, just choose literally any other drink. And with that, we cross Red Bull off a potential sponsors list on the theorist office wall. So while Sheesh. the worst across all the categories were very clear, the taste test reactions were much more split when it came to top contenders. Sure, within each individual category, the two people testing each color almost always agreed on the best brand, but each color was coming from a wildly different best brand. When it did come to the top contenders, there were two clear favorites. Both Monster and Prime were voted best in class four times each. So when it comes to flavor alone, they were our two clear leaders. And again, this mirrors exactly what we found last time in our hydration episode. Prime, across the board, is just strong when it comes to flavor. Where it struggled last time, though, was with the science. So from mm. here on out, we're going to be talking about how the ingredients Yo. in all of these drinks stack up next to each other. And as a final cherry on top, we're going to look at the survey data from our team, who we asked to evaluate each drink for its energy effectiveness and the amount of crap at the end of the day. So Logan, you might have won the flavor round, but we're about to find out how you stack up to some serious stimulant science. The first Probably thing we need to do is talk about the like energy the first component one. of all energy drinks. Every single one of the drinks that we tasted had caffeine as a common ingredient, but interestingly, not all caffeine is created equally. There are actually several types of caffeine present in energy drinks, but we often pick them off the shelves not understanding what those differences are. Usually when we think of caffeine, we think of coffee, but caffeine sources yeah. vary quite a bit aside from just the coffee bean. <laughs> caffeine can also come from guarana, a fruit native to the Amazon basin which has anywhere between three to four times the amount of caffeine in its seeds than Damn. coffee. Guarana is also likely to digest Damn. slower, thereby releasing caffeine more slowly into the body. That leads to fewer rapid jitters and more sustained awake feelings throughout the day. Taurine is another stimulant in energy drinks, one that was originally what? rumored to come from bull semen. Yep, you heard that uh, one right, but congratulations to bulls and to us. This is not actually true. It actually originated from their bile. Nowadays, it's mostly uh, synthetically made <laughs> like that's even better bro what the fuck us this is not actually true it actually originated from their bile nowadays oh. it's mostly synthetically made but just a fun little fact there <laughs> Woo! bull bile goes down easy that said our body actually <laughs> nah, makes nah, nah. its own taurine in high concentrations in our brain heart and muscles oh, taurine man. is not the same as caffeine but there is some tenuous research out there that says taking additional taurine supposedly boosts energy and improves athletic and mental performance not great really well-founded research but it is out there. And finally, one additional big component in lots of energy blends is the amino acid L-carnitine, which helps the body turn fat into energy. Now, your body usually makes all the carnitine it needs, but this stuff is marketed as being sciency, and maybe it helps you to lose weight. None of that is actually well supported with research, but, you know, it is something that they say in the marketing. So, which energy is in which of these drinks, and what's that going to tell us about how it's going to act on our body? Of the drinks we tested, caffeine ranged from 114 milligrams with Red Bull to a whopping 200 milligrams in prime Prime, Ghost, and Fast Twitch, all of whom compete closely Sheesh. for the esports market of up all night gamers and interneters. Compared to those astronomical numbers, Monster sat in the middle there with 160 milligrams per can. Off the bat, it seems like if you're just going for pure caffeine amount and taste alone, Prime is going to be your answer. But that's not the end of the story. Taking a look deeper, we can actually see that the energy blends in these drinks vary a lot to give you, at least theoretically, a totally different experience that might make you reconsider whether you're going with your preferred flavor or your body's 
preferred source of energy. Let's start mm, off with- I ain't gonna lie. <clears throat> Maybe because I only drink like one can, but Red Bull doesn't really do much to me. Prime, bro, when I was taste testing that shit, I felt like I was feeling it. I ain't gonna lie. The simplest drink from our test group, Fast Twitch. With five calories, 200 milligrams of caffeine, and zero sugar, Gatorade opts out of peddling long scientific sounding names or herbs that barely anyone's ever heard of, and instead just delivers a quick shot of caffeine mixed with a lot of juice concentrate. Don't worry, it actually contains 0% real juice. And don't you for a second think that the blatant ripoff of the FaZe Clan logo there's gone on notice, Gatorade. Tis no, no, facts, bro. I was just looking at that shit. For a second think that the blatant ripoff of the FaZe Clan logo there's gone on notice, Gatorade. Bro, dead ass, bro. The T with the corner slanted. This bottom part. <clears throat> yeah, that's man. He's like, hey, yo. <laughs> Raid. Tisk tisk. I'm watching you. <laughs> so, how did our team respond to this one in our survey for the week? Well, according to the team who took it as their primary kick of caffeine in the middle of the day, Phase <coughs> Twitch. <laughs> sorry, now I'm gonna oh. be messing that one up all day. Fast Twitch phase took a twitch. little bit of the day. Phase Twitch. <laughs> sorry, now I'm gonna be messing that one up all day. Fast Twitch took a little bit longer to kick in with milder effects than the others, thereby making it seem less like a full-on energy drink and more like a caffeinated version of the original Gatorade with less tasty flavors. Overall, it's not exciting, not offensive, kind of the way it came out in the flavor test. The bottom line here is that you're pretty <laughs> safe with this stuff, but if you have a paper due in six hours and it's already 2 a.m., this ain't gonna be moving any mountains for you. Next up is Red Bull, our universally hated taste test loser, boasting 114 <laughs> milligrams of caffeine per 12 ounce can, with and also coming in at 160 calories because it's one of our fully sugared options. Now, Red Bull lists taurine as one of its ingredients. I know what you're thinking. Taurine, Red Bull, Taurus means bull. It's all cutesy and clever marketing, right? To which I say, no, no, actually, Red Bull does not actually get its name from the thematically appropriate ingredient. That would have been too smart for them. Like everything with Red Bull in this episode, it is just lackluster and underwhelming. As we talked about before, taurine sounds exciting on the label, but there's almost nothing definitive behind it, and your body produces plenty of its own taurine practically all the time. In our in-house tests with our team members, everyone who tested one of these things had a distinctive crash every single time. Red Bull might give you wings, but it's also not giving you a parachute when you come down off its high. Across the board, I'm Red Bull was shit, so bro. far at the bottom of the barrel across Across all three of our tests, and I'm just kicking it straight out of this episode. Get out of here, Red Bull. Get, get go. On to our top two flavor contenders, Monster and Prime, who might have both scored highly on the taste ah. test, but come at their formulations from vastly different angles. Prime, with its 200 milligrams of caffeine, is supposed to be the star of our show. It only has 10 calories with its top tier levels of caffeine, making it the most attractive choice. And like its less twitchy cousins over in the hydration line, Prime Energy also is flavored with coconut water, which is is acting as part of the sweetener here. Because this is a natural ingredient that people use all the time, this is supposed to come off as healthy or clean, unlike all the other rival brands with their nasty chemicals. But taking a closer look at the nutrition facts here shows us that the coconut water is from concentrate, which unfortunately changes the entire ball game. It turns out uh. the process of concentrating the water to a syrup actually damages the nutrients and enzymes that would be healthy to consume, meaning that the- Healthier. You thought. Fuck is you saying, bro? of coconut water from concentrate here is basically just including the sugar and none of the actual nutrients found naturally in the coconut. Prime's other claim Jeez. to fame here is the inclusion of BCAAs, <laughs> or branched chain amino acids. These play an important role in building and repairing muscles, which has made them the star for many supplement marketing campaigns. In theory, in food theory, this would be a great Bro, differentiator for Prime, and that's how the episode's not over. In food theory, <laughs> this would be a great differentiator for Prime, and that's how they've marketed it. Not only is this drink giving you the energy, but it's also helping to repair your muscles while you're working out with every sip. It is a great gimmick. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's all it is. The research of <laughs> great gimmick. from supplements versus regular Yo. food in your diet is still out, and when people do supplement their diets with BCAAs, the dosages look very different from what you're getting in a can of Prime. Prime has roughly 123 milligrams of BCAAs. Compare that to all the research studies which are using 5 to 10 grams Damn. of BCAAs. I'll spare you that conversion there, friendos. That is 5 to 10,000 milligrams compared to Prime's 123. That means that to get a real dosage of BCAA, you'd have to consume between 40 and 50 cans yeah, worth of... Uh, imagine, bro. I'm, bro, how many Prime flavors is one? Uh, I think there's seven. Seven flavors, bro. And taking two or three sips of that at the taste test, bro, I was feeling it. 
40, 50 cans, bro? Get the fuck out of here. Prime, which, just so you know, would contain 8,000 milligrams of caffeine. Likely nah. more than enough to kill you a couple times over. So, nah. just like we saw over on the hydration side, Prime hey, isn't yo. lying to you about what's in it, but the ingredients that are here are either ones that Finesse. look healthy and aren't, or are ones that are so badly proportioned that they're basically negligible to your body. Now, let's compare all of this to Monster, which, by my assumption, has always been the most chemically sounding of the brands. Call me crazy, but branding that has toxic green gamer color just doesn't look healthy for my body and when it does come to health Black monster isn't looking strong out of the gate it has 230 calories per 16 ounce can and 160 milligrams of caffeine that is an electrifying 58 grams of sugar per can nearly Boy. twice the american heart association's recommended amount of 36 grams of sugar for an entire day for the sake of fairness i'll Damn. definitely call out the fact that monster has zero sugar variants one ah. of which actually won our blue round but since each flavor varies the recipe a bit. I'm just going to be sticking to the original beast despite it having the worst taste. It's like a soapy cotton candy on the back. If the sugar does uh, for me, it's not bad. It's not bad to taste for me. I still prefer Red Bull taste. I ain't gonna lie over Monster, but... Doesn't have yet a full stop, though. It's worth noting that things get interesting once you start looking <clears> at the energy blend of Monster itself. One of the most prominent ingredients in its energy blend is Panax Ginseng Extract, which comes from a plant commonly found in Korea, China, and Siberia. Though it might not boost energy, early research shows that it might help improve cognitive performance and make you feel more alert in the right dosages. Mm. And while Monster might not reach the 200 milligram okay. optimal dose that we see in the research, at 82 milligrams, it's certainly in the ballpark and it's only one of two drinks in the entire field to contain it it also uses guarana in its yeah, energy blend, something that no other drink in our lineup lists despite it being one of the few ingredients shown to provide a more sustained release of energy the major source of caffeine here is still likely synthetic but if synthetic caffeine acts as the initial boost and is then complemented later by the guarana and ginseng to give you a longer lasting feeling of alertness and energy well that would make it a much more well-rounded drink than any of the others in the competition so far and this is exactly mm. what we wound up seeing in the data. Our team reported a high level of alertness for multiple hours while drinking Monster, and while they did report crashes, these didn't hit until four to five hours later. Most importantly of all, though, it didn't leave them feeling jittery, like a lot of the other drinks in the lineup. So from a health perspective, Monster provides an interesting trade-off. If you're searching for an energy drink and you're not worried about ingesting a ton of sugar, or if you're comfortable with the non-sugar variants, this could be an excellent choice for you. But if sugar is all in right. fact high on your no-no list, you're going to want to look elsewhere. Between Prime and Monster, our top two flavor contenders, Monster is definitely the better energy blend. It also has All the right. less misleading of the two labels. However, Bro, I really wonder if KSI, uh, KSI, uh, Logan Paul have watched these episodes, boy. It's also the less healthy option because of that huge volume of sugar. So now the question is, is this the best that yeah, we can bro. do? I ain't gonna lie. The taste, they smack you, bro. Prime, Prime Energy smacks you with flavor. They dead ass taste like hella sugar bro like you taste that shit it's crazy so the less healthy option because of that huge volume of sugar so now the question is is this the best that we can do if we're trying to find the best energy blend with no sugary trade-off is there any other option out there that could possibly give us the best of both probably worlds? not turns out the answer is yes our extremely really? unexpected champion when it comes to the actual energy drink ingredients is hold on hold on hold on, hold on. i don't even know any other fucking flavors i mean uh companies that us Ghost? No. No, that's Ghost. the one that actively flavored itself like a Sour Patch Kid. It's gotta be pure sugar and synthetics, right? Nope. Ghost is actually shockingly good. Coming in with only 5 calories and a whopping Damn. 200 milligrams of caffeine in a 16 ounce can, Ghost gives you the highest proportion of caffeine to calories of any drink in the lineup. The stimulants it okay. uses to round out its energy blend are L-carnitine and taurine, which we've talked about before and aren't likely to be huge contenders here. More than those though, there are two key ingredients here that we have to call out from the energy blend that make it stand out beyond anything else. The first is alpha glycerol phosphoryl choline, or alpha GPC for short. It's a chemical that's made in the body. It seems to increase levels of a key neurotransmitter in the brain called acetylcholine, basically a small molecule that's specifically responsible for memory and learning function. Though more research is needed for this, really? early evidence suggests that it might be able to help with certain physical and mental tasks depending on the dosage. What? That's crazy. 
the evidence suggests that it might be able to help with certain physical and mental tasks depending on the dosage. The other compound that Ghost has that no one else can claim is called Astrogen, a combination of Panax Ginseng and Astragalus Membranaceus. Despite all of these names sounding really synthetic and chemically, they're actually all mad natural. complex. Astragalus actually might have antioxidant effects, which means that it may be able to protect your cells from stress and could boost your immune system. Unlike all the other brands ingredients that we've talked about today, that's crazy because like looking at the can bro warhead flavor all right bro like look just looking at the can this shit screams sugar you know what i'm saying i don't know bro just sometimes the colors be get uh be having people think like oh damn this is not healthy you know what i'm saying this shit dead ass screams sugar unhealthy that's crazy Astragalus actually <clears throat> might have antioxidant effects, which means that it may be able to protect your cells from stress and could boost your immune system. Unlike all the other brands' ingredients that we've talked about today, Ghost's key ingredients here have fairly sound research behind them. And so they're not just ghost. things that we produce naturally that we don't really need more of, like taurine and L-carnitine. The last thing that I gotta call out about Ghost is the type of caffeine that's being used. Unlike all the others that fail to mention where they derive their caffeine from, usually meaning it's synthetically created using a chemical synthesis of ammonia, a gross and stinky process that we'll probably save for another day, Ghost nah. specifies that the caffeine is from coffee beans. Why does that make a difference? Well, synthetic caffeine is more potent and more quickly absorbed by the body, whereas natural caffeine is absorbed slower, which means a less sudden spike in energy, and also a less dramatic crash than the synthetic kinds. Now, you'll likely still experience some sort of a crash, but it won't be as bad. And interestingly enough, this exact prediction played out when it came to our team's experience taking Ghost as their their primary energy source for the day. They got Sheesh. a lot of energy, it was sustained over several hours, and though they did eventually crash, the crash wasn't nearly as bad as any of the other beverages, especially when you look at it compared to Prime and Red Bull. I never tried Ghost, bro. Never tried Ghost. Like I said, I picked it up, but the can, bro, the, it's the, it's, the can feels hella good, bro. Just got this grip to it, you know what I'm saying? So what? Uh, fuck Prime, get Ghost Bad type shit, you know? Beverages, especially <clears throat> when you look at it compared to Prime and Red Bull. So at the end of the day, when it comes to energy drinks, what are you going to go for at the store? Well, if there's one thing we can definitely say, it's that we'll be breezing straight past the Red Bull and Gatorade and then making the hard choice between taste with either Monster or Prime and effectiveness. The clear winner there being okay. Ghost. At the end of the day, it just depends All on right. what your real purpose is for drinking that energy That's crazy. Drink. Are you sipping on the can because you like the flavor and you just want the added bonus of getting a little extra a buzzy boost if that's the case then yeah go for either prime or monster they do taste the best just make sure that you're going in eyes open with that prime know that it's not delivering on all the health components that it promotes it's just caffeinated juice from concentrate on the other end of the spectrum if you're more serious about the energy side of your energy drink okay and you don't mind slurping down well that's good to know that ass you're not saying honestly <clears throat> i don't think i've ever bought an energy drink to get energy you know what i'm saying like every time i get a red bull it's really just to drink it, bro, That ass. Like, I never went into a store, oh, damn, I need some energy. Let me get this, this, that. You feel me? I was just like, I'm feeling a little bit of Red Bull. This shit take good, you know what I'm saying? Let me cop it. And then with Prime, obviously, I did the taste test. And you feel me? Monster, I've tried too, but in terms of energy... <laughs> Going ghost, yeah, that's the spectrum. If you're more serious about the energy side that's of crazy. your energy drink, and you don't mind slurping down a liquefied sour patch kid in exchange for an entire afternoon of energy, <laughs> then you're headed straight for the ghost, which is gonna make you look like a fourth grader at your job. And it's not exactly the most <laughs> sippable choice, but bizarrely, it's the option for those who truly care about their energy blend. So, well, yes, okay. the prime drinkers might end up that's laughing at you for your juvenile choice. You're gonna be the last one standing <laughs> as your coworkers and classmates start stumbling around like zombies at three. 30. But regardless of your choice, now you know what you're drinking and why you're drinking it. So get out there and okay. start chugging. Uh, or not, you know, we could all stand to drink just a little bit more water. All of these things. Oh, water is, is what, hey, H2O? Undefeated, all right? I'm taking water over everything and anything. Every trip, bro. Every trip. No cap. I'm a water fiend, gang. I drink water every day. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, I drink water with when I eat bread, soup. Uh, burgers, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, this right here, bye. 
yes. Of the relative level of health and caffeine and all that, all of them are probably doing just awful stuff for our systems. We are over caffeinating ourselves to the max. <clears throat> Meanwhile, when it comes to drinking battery acid, I'll just be over here drinking my Diet Coke. Thanks. I've literally Diet Coke, bro. What what what's good with Diet Coke? Has he I'm pretty sure he has an episode on Diet Coke, right? It has to be. Cause it's like every I don't know, he just brings it up all the time. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? What's good with Diet Coke? I heard this shit was, it was worse than regular Coke. You know what I'm saying? I really had enough energy drinks to last a lifetime, and I never want to see one of these things ever again. Don't you <laughs> dare ask me for a sequel, by the way, because I recognize that we didn't test out Rockstar. Or, you know what? If enough of you do, leave comments yeah. down below. Yeah. Gotta admit, it was kind of fun to be able to see through the particles of the universe for a little bit. I ascended and touched the gods. As always, my friends, remember, it's all just a theory. A, a food, food theory. theory. Bottoms up. <laughs> Did you know our sponsor? Yeah, no. W sponsor. Ah, no, nah, that's that is good to know, bro. That's good to know. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? <coughs> you feel me? Ghost is the way to go if you're serious about the energy. Everything else is just pretty much like taste, I guess. You know, and there's a lot of good tasting like drinks and stuff, but like really think about it. What what's like the if you're going for something specific? Go get that specific thing that actually works. You know what I'm saying? Me though, I'm gonna stick to my water. All right, I'm sticking to my water. I wanted to bet Matt's heart did not thank him for the amount of caffeine he consumed to make this episode. As someone who really doesn't seek out caffeine, seek out caffeine. Probably the place I would get the most is not noticing whether or not my tea is caffeinated. I found this extremely educational. That's a fact. As I've often wondered how synthetic caffeine altern alternatives are made and used outside the industry standard just chugging a coffee mm. yeah bro coffee bro hey america runs on dunkin that's a fact because every fucking day bro people just gotta get their coffee bro iced hot whatever it be you know what i'm saying i'm not a big coffee fan bro i don't like the taste of that shit i don't we all know that mars beginning to show his true dad pat side when he makes them that many dad jokes someone who drinks a lot of different types of energy drinks i would definitely love another deep dive on more types just to see if ghost stays on top of the list it probably will honestly because it's like they'd even bother with rockstar or anything else you know what i'm saying so it's like i don't know i don't know or maybe he went for the bigger brands which does make sense but like isn't ghost a newer brand too like prime i think prime is the newest rockstar has been around i think uh there's just a bunch bro there's just a bunch i ain't gonna lie um so yeah i don't i mean he can do it and if he does we react to it you know what i'm saying if y'all want it but i think that list he used was like the top contenders that ass and like everything else was just like i don't know i don't know as someone who drank like five monsters in a night with friends, I can confirm that the crash was crazy. My whole friend group ended up crying for an hour while blasting a song on repeat. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> I don't know, bro. I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought. Oh, that's my reaction. If you enjoyed, give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't. And I'm out.